All right. Hello, everybody. Um, and thank you so much for spending your time with us tonight, or maybe day, because we have several registration from overseas. I'm um, Ali Rezai, the presidency of Shala Group, and it is my privilege to introduce you to the speakers tonight. So we start with Dr. Anthony Tao. Dr. Tao received his dental degree at the University of Western Ontario and completed his residency at the Toronto General Hospital. He's the owner of the very successful Bayview Dental Clinic. We know he's very successful because he places a lot of order. So thank you for that, Dr. Tao. He's a member of several dental groups and associations, including the International Association of Orthodontics, the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry, Ontario Dental Association, and many more. He has earned um, a fellowship with the International College of Oral Implantology, International College of Dentists, and Pierre Faucher Academy. We are really pleased to have Dr. Tao sharing his experience with us tonight. Lisa, Lisa Masotti has been with Align Technology for over two years. She works with all dental professionals and she's been instrumental in educating, supporting many with integration of digital scanning technology into their practices. I can tell you that she's an amazing help to us. And I'm sure yeah, she is to many of you. And if you get an iTero scanner, you will hear from her. Her focus and passion for iTero technology, and she's very passionate about iTero, I can say, and digital workflow provides the highest level of support. She does. Last but not least, our very own Amanda De La Cruz. So Amanda is an award-winning designer with a bachelor degree of design from OCAD University and advanced diploma with honors in dental technology from the famous George Brown College. She has been on the dental technology program at Bowser Council at the George Brown College since 2015 and has been involved with numerous CAD CAM technologies over the past 12 years. I can tell you Shaw is very lucky to have her. I also have to say she's surrounded by amazing and talented digital dental technologists at Shaw Lab Group. She's currently the supervisor of Shaw GTA dental design team. We are very lucky to have Amanda. Amanda, thank you so much. I know they have all spent a significant amount of time putting a great presentation today. By the way, built from scratch, it's completely custom built, is not pulled from a file, and I'm sure you all will enjoy it. Over to you, Lee or Lisa. Thank you so much for your time. Um, have a great um, rest of the day. I'm just starting to share my screen. Welcome. I hope everyone can see that. Thank you, Ali. Um, and welcome, everyone. It's so fantastic to see so many people join us tonight. Again, my name is Lee Campbell. I am with the Canadian iTero team, specifically working with the, the iTero and labs. I'm just going to share a few screen slides here with you to talk about what we're going to discuss tonight, and then I'm going to pass it on to our speakers. But just an overview, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about why digital. Then Lisa is going to take us through iTero, more in-depth conversation and illustration of the restorative workflow, some of the tools and application. Then Amanda is going to show us the digital workflow from the lab perspective. And finally, we'll get an opportunity to hear from Dr. Tao sharing his experience with that digital workflow and insights on return on investment. What I will draw your attention to is please use the Q&A widget at the bottom of your screen for questions. What we'll do is at the end, we're reserving a little bit of time to, to answer those. So, so I'm just gonna talk about a little bit about digital dentistry. Here's an illustration of adoption. And what you're seeing is that laboratories, they were early to adopt. And today, 70% of laboratories approximately are fully digital meaning they're working with 3D printers, milling units, CAD software for their design, um, even to the point where if they're receiving PBS impressions, the dental technician is scanning that with a tabletop scanner to digitize your impression into a 3D rendering, and then working on that case with CAD software. So when you think sending a digital scan, what that does is remove that step, essentially saving time. 
And here is an illustration of what that adoption looks like as it relates to digital impressions. You know, it's interesting to sort of reflectively think like, where are you on this adoption? And majority of people we speak to definitely agree that everybody's going to get to that point. And so when you think about that, why are people adopting? You know, you really can't escape discussions around digital dentistry. You know, when we used to go to trade shows, you'd see a lot of um, new technology there. And the reality is this is leading to one of the most revolutionary time in dentistry since the advent of radiographs. So when you're faced with making a big investment, like digital radiographs, you really want a lot of information on what's the return on investment, how disruptive will this be, will quality suffer. So our goal tonight is really to illustrate the value of scanning and, and really answer all of those questions. So one thing I did want to kind of mention here is that, you know, we really are in a digital age. If you think about your day-to-day -day habits, digital has a huge impact and influence in the modern consumer. And that consumer is increasingly expecting or expects the digital experience. So not just in dental, but in, in the world in general. And interesting, you know, this trend has not only been accelerating in, in the recent years, but more recently with COVID, that's really expedited that growth. Lastly, I just want to touch quickly on the patient experience. I'd be remiss if I didn't point out the advantage of scanning as it relates to capturing that impression. So with scanning, you're really taking away those disadvantages of conventional impression techniques, such as difficulty breathing, taste, gag reflex, just overall discomfort and time. So I'm gonna pause here and pass it over to Lisa to go more in depth on iTero. What I'd like to do now is talk a little bit about the history of iTero and really the fact that our roots are restorative. Previous to uh, iTero, we were a company called Cadent. And in 2006, Align recognized that, that really having that restorative workflow was so critical to providing a comprehensive platform. And in 2006, Cadent, then Cadent really pioneered that space by sending a fully digital scan directly to a lab. So when we look at this evolution of technology, not only has it changed in size, but really in performance. And if you think about scans using powder, scanning tooth by tooth, and really just replacing PVS. Now we have transformed the patient experience and providing the clinicians with so much information in a single scan. And since 2006, we have received upwards of 3 million restorative scans. We have also vetted and verified 13,000 edentulous scans, fully edentulous scans. And we have also been able to get that scan time down to 60 seconds for a full arch. So when we talk about this diagnostic scan and, and really where iTero is differentiated in the market is by being able to capture so much information from that single scan and being able to engage your patient in whichever conversation is relevant in that moment. So, when we talk about some of the proprietary applications that we use to really provide a holistic approach in, in engaging our patients and really help them understand what's going on with their oral health. And that starts with the occlusogram. So by capturing 6,000 points per second, what we are able to do is an, at an accuracy of 0 0.05 is capture how that patient is, is in occlusion if the patient has a malocclusion, where there's areas of disproportionate force annotated by areas of red. And this really gives the patient a view of what's going on with their overall oral health and their malocclusion. Time lapse, another amazing patient facing application to be able to show your patient in real time the change between two scans and not only visually show them that change, but to be able to quantify that change. So if you think about a pre and post restorative treatment, pre and post ortho treatment, if you think of gingival recession or wear, anything in which you want to compare to a patient in real time, you are able to do that with time-lapse te technology. 
And our most recent innovation in the Element 5D imaging system, we are able to capture that 3D high definition image while also capturing intraoral photos and caries detection in one single scan without having to change the tip and without scanning tooth by tooth. So just again, so much powerful information. And finally, having that 3D permanent digital impression. So here we're showing you a, an actual scan in real time. So you can see the speed to which we are capturing that image. We also make full contact with the teeth versus hovering, which seems very simple, but is really a critical, uh, in, in critically important part of scanning in that it's done quickly and you know where you are during the scan. So you can imagine trying to retract and control tissue uh, while also hovering. So by making full contact with the teeth, it, it really helps with ease of use in, in doing overall scanning. So moving on to the actual workflow in doing a scan, the first step is, is filling out the prescription, then scanning and, and reviewing the scan before we send it to the lab. So what I have done is I have selected a restorative scan. And here, based on the type of procedure I'm doing, it will tailor the workflow that is required for that specific scan. So you can see, of course, I'm sending it to Shaw GTA, um, and I'm doing a crown on the 3.6 for this particular case. If I wanted to add specific information to the lab, I could do that in the notes section. And then once I've captured this information, I'm going right into the scan. So we have completed the scan for the crown on the 3.6. And what I'm able to do is in conversation with my patient, I'm able to move this model. But most importantly, what I can do is I can use the fill tool, which is a step that allows the iTero to pick up areas of missing information and only those areas of missing information. So you can imagine rather than scanning and over scanning, increasing the size of the file, the fill tool is a very quick and easy step that helps maintain the actual scan size and accuracy because it's only detecting those areas of missing information and allowing me to capture them. So when I go to the post-processing, this is where I like to say the magic happens because this is really critical in terms of the steps that we are going to take to ensure that we have that pristinely fitting restoration. So if you think of the seating time that you're booking right now for your crowns, for example, it may be 40 minutes, it may be 50 minutes to an hour. And what we have are tools to really allow you to shorten that seating time to allow you to do more dentistry. And what I mean by that is you may recall the occlusogram. And the same principle applies here, where I'm able to blow this up, take a look at that prep, and based on the restorative material that I'm using in, in this situation, uh, full contour zirconia, I know how much clearance I need. So I need 1.3 to 1.5 millimeters, and clearly I don't have that on my prep. So by using the eraser tool, what I am able to do while keeping the margin intact is remove that occlusal surface. And this is where we have to play imagination a little bit. And this is where you would physically reduce that prep. And then what I would do is go back again, it's going to detect only the area of missing information that I've just removed with that eraser tool and capture that only and go back to post-processing. So if you think of tissue management, and you think of how important that is to, to capture that clean and relatively dry prep, you could use that same principle to manage tissue and moisture in one specific area. So instead of having to repack cord, if you have a tag, for example, I could use that same principle, remove that specific area where that tag is, and then go back and rescan. And again, this is really where not only do we see the production going up in terms of time and fewer remakes, but really greater amounts of chair time. We see our practices moving to a digital workflow, shortening that crown seating appointment to 15 minutes. So if we look at roughly 
$600 an hour in chair time, you are saving so much chair time and increasing the amount of dentistry that you're able to do. So once it's finished the post-processing, this is where the artificial intelligence cleans up that scan. I simply would push the send button and that's where it would go to Shaw directly. So let's talk about some of the patient facing applications that we have and to really engage the patient chair side. So what I'd like to show you now are some of the patient facing applications available from that one single scan. So if you think of the time that it would take you to use a caries detection device to take individual into oral photos, we've captured all of that in one single scan. And so really, these are all levers to be able to pull in that conversation with that patient chair side in whatever is appropriate at that time. So I can navigate these arches individually, side by side. You can see the soft tissue definition. You can see where, you can see abstractions. I can go into a gallery view and move each window independently. I can change into a stone mode um, and see again, soft tissue definition and where. And what I really love here is I can turn on the occlusogram. And this is where I can see full areas of contact annotated by areas of red, where the patient's teeth may be in trauma. And this really gives the clinician the ability to educate the patient on what does a healthy bite look like? And patients are really fascinated by this. Some practices will let them touch the screen, move the model around and really engage the patient in that way. So this could be a pre-restorative conversation, for example, that you're having and, and level setting with the patient. So I see areas of disproportionate force from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. So I can go ahead and, and place that crown on your 3-6, but I can't guarantee it's going to last. We may want to talk about fixing your malocclusion. Um, so again, the occlusogram is, is just a really great place to start with patients to educate them on what a healthy bite looks like. If I wanted to take it a step further from that same scan, what I can then do is show the patient early caries lesions. And I would simply activate this little Bluetooth and just by dynamically moving this magnifying glass on the screen, I can take a look for those interproximal caries. And the way the near infrared light reflects on the occlusal surface, those early caries lesions appear bright white. And what's so amazing about this is that if there's anything specific that I want to capture in that moment, I would simply push the camera button and that image would automatically be sent to my iTero cloud. I can move this magnifying glass dynamically and I can change this in, in full 3D. So if I take a look at this carries on the three, being able to look at that on a buckle view or multiple views is, is a limitation that, and something I wouldn't be able to do in a bite wing being two dimensional. So if you think about pregnant women, children, people who are generally adverse to having an X-ray, this is such a powerful tool to not only detect those early caries lesions to again, elevate that patient experience and really highlight that hygiene, especially for younger patients and then go ahead and bring them back to do that bite clean and make that clinical diagnosis. So that is the caries detection and the intraoral photos. So again, going back to comparing two scans, this is a, a situation that I'm sure you've often encountered where your patient says, I, you know, I seem to be having headaches and, and jaw pain, but I, I'm not clenching. Well, to be able to not only show your patient that where, but to be able to quantify that is really where we see that conversion and case lift and acceptance in whatever it is the treatment that you're proposing. So with these applications and being able to engage your patient, really following the talk track of what is the current situation? What are the consequences of that? And what is the treatment that we're proposing? And we know by visually showing patients, it overcomes the two main objections to treatment, which are patients don't understand the treatment that's being proposed or they don't trust. And so by visually being able to show your patient, that's where we really overcome those objections. And again, just 
moving this magnifying glass over those areas of change highlighted by the legend for a little more of a dramatic effect I could do a buckle view here. And so you can see in the top right hand corner, the actual flattening of those cusps. I can pause that, I can change it into color mode. So again, so if we think about anything that you want to compare pre and post restorative treatment, um, recession, where anything to compare in real time, time lapse is your go to for that. So that concludes the live demonstration. So as you can see, the amount of information that we're able to capture from this scan is, is just incredible in terms of the soft tissue. Here we can see through the intraoral camera, it depicting receding tissue, color change and crowding that supports the accumulation and challenge removal of deposits. It almost looks fluorescent. What some practices will do is they will scan and then scale and then rescan again, just really, again, elevating that patient experience. Here's another slide uh, where we can see in the NERI image, craze lines. And you can see that it's indicative of possible long-term wear and excessive forces. The intraoral camera displays tissue color change along the margin line. And moving to post-scan. So all of the information is cloud-based with iTero. So you're not bogging down the scanner and slowing down scanning times. And what that really allows you to do is, is realize the value of digital beyond just chair side with the patient and using the scanner. In fact, what it can do is allow you to use the iTero as your workhorse and be able to still submit cases, change cases, add cases, access these cases from anywhere in the world that you have an internet connection. And what you can see is exactly what you can see on the iTero. So being able to show your patient remotely their scan, show them the occlusogram, their intraoral photos, their caries detection, just so powerful. And again, increasing that efficiency in production beyond where the iTero is. And building on that, the interface that we have at the chair side and for the clinician is exactly mirrored in what the lab sees. So when you receive, when they send, when you send the scan to the lab, the lab receives it immediately. And this is called direct to lab. And what that allows the lab to do as your partner is really decide what is the best in that situation to make the, the best restoration. And what I mean by that is they can go ahead and print that. They can send it to iTero modeling and interpretation. They can use our milled models. They can ask us to mark the margin or your lab can mark the margin. So really the lab is the quarterback and they know best as your partner what the best outcome should be for that restoration. So now I'm going to turn it over to Amanda. Hello, everyone. Um, in case you missed Ali's introduction, I'm Amanda Dela Cruz, and I'm here today representing Shaw Lab Group. I am currently the CAD-CAM supervisor at Shaw GTA. So we are going over the digital workflow today at Shaw Lab Group with iTero. Go ahead. I'm going to start off with a little background information for everybody. Shaw Lab Group has been proudly serving the Canadian dental community for over 77 years. We are a group of full service digital laboratories, highly experienced in fixed, removable and ortho products. We have four convenient locations across Ontario, one in the GTA, which is our headquarters where I'm from. We have one in Kingston, we have one in London, as well as Ottawa. Um, so now I'm going to introduce everybody to our laboratory and sales managers. I don't know about everyone else, but it always helps me to communicate better when I can associate a name with a face. So it's always a great idea to have amazing communication with us at the lab. The better we communicate with each other, the better our relationship will be, the better our product, the happier the patient. So I'm going to first introduce Mike Lino. He is our lab manager at Shaw GTA. He has worked with Shaw for over 20 years now in all different capacities. He got his RDT when he was 21. So he was most likely the youngest person in Ontario to ever get their license. He's also a green belt lean manufacturing champion and an inspiring leader overall. Then we have Aaron King, who is the lab manager at Shaw Kingston. 
He's been with Shaw since 1993, and he's worked in all different departments during his career. He's a graduate of George Brown College. He's an RDP, a great leader, and a technician. Uh, Jamie Scott joined Shaw London back in 2000. She's worked in many different departments, and before she was promoted to lab manager, she was a ceramics department supervisor. She was also a George Brown College graduate and RDP. Kevin Doucette rejoined Shaw Lab Group in 2019. He worked for Shaw for about 10 years back in the 80s, and then he owned and operated his own laboratory for 28 years. He is a past president of the College of Dental Technologists of Ontario, and he specializes in case planning and prosthetic treatment planning. Uh, during his career, he has done consulting for several major dental firms. Uh, Mike, Rodney, and Shauna are our sales territory managers. They all have extensive experience in the dental field, and they can help you with any questions or connect you with anyone internally within Shaw that you may need to speak to. They're all heavily involved in our CE programs, and um, they are really great at helping dentists grow their practice. So please don't hesitate to reach out to any of these people. Um, so I want to put a little bit of spotlight on all our technicians at Shaw. Not everyone in the lab is front and center or on the phones, they are, but they are all a very critical part of what make every product possible and every happy patient. Um, I, I myself have a, a fantastic team, so I, I definitely want to showcase them here and uh, they will be showcased in my video later on. Um, so we are a very large and diverse team here at Shaw Lab Group. We have a wide array of specialists. We have over 30 RDPs. All these people are here to assist dentists with their practice needs. So I think sometimes people don't realize um, the great thing about working with a big lab is that you're going to have multiple specialists working on your cases. So you're not gonna have the same technician who's pretty good at one or two things and pretty average at the other eight things um, working on your case by themselves. A big strength we have is that we are so collaborative and our technicians are, uh, they know their tasks inside and out. They utilize their full experience in their roles day after day. And if they don't, if they don't know the answer to something, there is someone at Shaw who does. So each of our locations is a fully functioning digital laboratory. Uh, we accept all types of digital impressions. If you already have an iTero scanner and I convince you to sign up with us, we have our iTero IDs here for an easy screenshot for whichever Shaw location that you would like to join. Okay, so today I'm going to go over the discussion points so that you know what to expect from me. We are going to go over my internal data on intraoral scanners and digital adoption. And then I'm going to go into what it really means to be a full service digital laboratory. After that, I'm going to show you a video of our complete digital workflow, starting from the moment that we get the scans from iTero all the way until the case is out the door. And then I'm going to have a quick, um, a quick slide just showing you how to send cases to us digitally. And then I'm going to end with a virtual tour of our um, our location at Shaw GTA, our headquarters. Uh, it's a beautiful space, 25,000 square feet, and we just celebrated our one year anniversary on Monday of, of moving to this new location. Okay, so let's begin. Um, so at Shaw, we like to make our decisions based on data. So my team and I have been compiling internal data on digital impressions that we have received and 3D printed in house since 2018. So last year, I did my first report on our findings from June 2018 to June 2020. And then this year from June 2020 to June 2021. So without giving out exact figures, the blue bars indicate the overall amount of digital scans that we received that year, while these orange lines have a different range of numbers and indicate the average amount of digital cases that we received monthly. So I, what I found was that despite the COVID lockdown in early 2020, which affected all the dentists in Ontario for almost two months, we still saw a monthly increase of 16% in the amount of digital orders we received from 2019 to 2020. So now there was a lot of time during that lockdown to watch all the webinars that were being released from every intraoral scanning company. Patient appointments had to be more spread out. It made sense to me that it would be even more critical uh, during that time to have a successful impression technique that could eliminate delays or require less appointments. Uh, so even with all those factors in mind, I was surprised to see the massive um, Sorry, I was surprised to see the massive increase that we were seeing in digital orders um, and Shaw GTA from June 2020 to June 2021. So from moving up from 2019, from the 2018 year before, we went up 16%. And then when we moved up to 2020 to 2021, we actually went up 175% um, of the amount of digital orders we were receiving every month from dentists all across. Uh, Canada. So more doctors were embracing digital adoption and more doctors were submitting more of their cases digitally than ever before. So, 
Uh, and then my second set of data points consist of how we receive those digital orders. That first pie chart that I'm going to show you is data from the 2018 to 2020 sets. Um, so what is important to note is that my data did not include any iTero scans that had models manufactured at iTero. So it only consisted of the digital scans that we modeled and printed in-house. So when we see that iTero scans made up of 37% of the digital orders we received that year, actually that number would be higher. So it's impossible to guess, but it's higher than this. Um, so we don't like to pick favorites at Shaw. We accept all digital scans, however you'd like to send them. We work with all implant companies without trying to influence the dentist based on any ulterior motive or kickback. So when I advise a doctor on a scanner, it's based on my experience of seeing thousands and thousands of digital scans, seeing their accuracy, quality, consistency, as well as the customer support that I receive when I have inquiries or issues. So because of this, when we were in discussions to have this webinar, I didn't have the hesitation that I would have had um, presenting if I didn't have this data. So I can present the numbers that show how popular these intraoral scanning systems rank with each other, even if I'm not um, explicitly telling you who the competitors are, uh, what the competitors are ranked at. So as I said, over one third of the digital orders were coming from iTero um, at our Shaw GTA location. And the next closest system, second place, was far behind at 16%. After that, it's even less. Third and fourth are at 6% and 2%. Fifth, sixth, and seventh are not even on this pie chart. So they're just invisible. Um, I get a lot of calls from doctors asking me what I think between two or three different scanners um, that they're potentially interested in. These numbers say a lot, and they help me give a better answer. Um, the higher the number, the more success these doctors are having with their scanners. They aren't purchasing it and using it once or twice. They're using it daily for as many cases as they can and has clearly become an integral part of their practices. So let's look at the data from June 2020 to June 2021. Amazingly, iTero has jumped up to 58% of all digital orders we had received that year. So this is 21% higher than last year, uh, than the last two years in one year. And why this is even more impressive is because when you look at the competitors, you can see that the second and third place uh, highest systems only increased by 2% each. Um, the fifth, sixth, and the fifth and sixth place competitors moved up to 1% from 0%. Um, sorry, the fourth place is 2%. And it's, yeah, it's not really much. So the other ones, they went up 1% to 2%. Um, we actually got a new scanner introduced to the Canadian market in 2021. So even though there might have been a lot of hype about it, it's still under 1%. So to sum up my findings, digital adoption and the usage of digital scans as a primary source of submission has dramatically increased within the past year. And it is very, very clear that the popular scanner of choice amongst our Shaw GTA doctors is iTero. So what does it mean when we say we are a full service digital laboratory? Firstly, it's that we're constantly upgrading and acquiring new technology and materials to meet industry standards. So because we do this, we are not just saying we can do your case, we really can. So we're not sending out the majority of your case to be made elsewhere. We're working on and fine tuning it every step of the way. We can print your surgical guides, models, provisionals, and night guards. We can mill your custom abutments and crowns. We are layering the porcelain and staining and glazing the zirconia. So we can customize the product in a way that can't be done if the majority of the manufacturing is outsourced. Um, yeah, so it's in-house manufacturing. So right now our printers and our mills are running from 7 a.m. until midnight from Monday to Friday. So when I started back at Shaw GTA back in 2013, there were two people in our CAD CAM department and we weren't manufacturing in-house yet. So now it's eight years later. And if you can remember that Shaw GTA photo from a few slides back, the one with the biggest group of employees that spanned the entire page, um, now one third of those people have roles that are completely dedicated to a digital workflow. At the same time, all of our other departments collaborate and work with 3D printed files and finalizing digital products. For example, our ortho department, their biggest product that's coming out is digitally designed and 3D printed uh, night guards. So it's no longer possible to be a fully analog lab technician at Shaw GTA. Okay, so now I'm gonna start my digital workflow um, video. This is a real case that was sent to us through the iTero portal. I didn't script any of my team. This is how they really work and collaborate together. Uh, they work pretty seamlessly. So I actually had a little bit of trouble trying to interrupt their flow and uh, stick my camera in their face, but this is really how they work, um, sped up of course. So let's begin. Okay. So we received the Otero scan within a few short minutes after the clinician sends the case. We are able to immediately evaluate it and send it back or give feedback to the doctor if needed. 
After this, we go straight into modeling the case, which means we import the scans into our software. We clean up the borders, we choose the margins. Um, we are also getting help from the ITERO model and interpretation team. You can see that light pink scan that's being referenced here repeatedly. Um, the model and interpretation team from ITERO is fantastic. So they see countless cases and I definitely trust their judgment in assisting us with margin selection. Um, we will also verify the bytes that the articulator, pick the path of insertion for the removable dies, hollow out the models, and then basically turn this from a digital scan into a printable object. So choosing the margins is often the most difficult part. If you can't see the margins clearly on the clinician end, most likely we're gonna have a difficult time as well. I definitely recommend using double retraction cord. It just keeps the margins clear. You don't have the compression of a PBS. And then at the next stage, you go to nesting. Basically, you're playing a bit of Tetris to try to fit it on that printing plate and set it up to be 3D printed. So now we have Helen here. She already put in the correct resin for the models and she's setting up the printer to accurately print the model and dies layer by layer. After about an hour and a half, we have Deandra here who's taking them off the plate and cleaning off the excess resin and they're ready to be post-processed. So she just runs it in an isopropyl alcohol bath um, in an orbital shaker and then she's going to light cure it and then the models are dimensionally stable and ready to go. So while these models are being printed, one of our designers can work on designing the bridge based off of the intraoral scan and modeling that was done earlier. So why I wanted to follow a real case is because it's so easy to showcase an ideal molar or central, like we've seen for every ad for every new product. So here we have a typical Shaw Zero bridge case. We can't auto design anything in here. Um, the spacing's not ideal, the interocclusal distance is tight, the canine was freshly extracted. So there's many considerations at the stage, how much pressure to put on the Pontic site. Um, should we mirror the canine? Should we make it more ideal? Um, we need to make the case structurally strong and aesthetically pleasing as possible. After the design is completed, the case is taken to our milling room where Francis here will nest the design to be milled in zirconia. He's already chosen the correct pre-shaded disc and he sets up the case so it's going to be supported in the disc in a way that it will mill successfully and with the right amount of detail. Then he's going to load that disc into the dry mill and once the cam file is finished loading, he can press start and the milling process can begin. You can start to see the finer mills, they start milling out in the interproximal areas of the bridge uh, just in a minute or so or less than a minute there you go and then after about an hour and a half the bridge is going to be done milling so after the milling is done we have vanessa here removing the supports with a uh, with a wheel and it, that held the bridge in the disc she blows off any excess dust and passes the case off um, so Yan here is putting it on a tray and she's gonna fire it at a high temperature to make sure we get the right translucency, translucency, shade and strength. After the cycle is done, Kevin's gonna work on the case. He refines the margin so they're smooth. He makes sure the bridge is sitting well with the appropriate amount of pressure and the bite and interproximal contacts are correct. Then the case will finally leave my department. It's gonna to go to the ceramics department to be stained and glazed. You can see Sandra here using her handpiece. She's going to add surface texture to reflect the light better, and she has already individualized the teeth within the bridge itself. Then she's going to use her shade tabs. They assist uh, her with adding the correct amount of translucency to the incisal and making the gingival area a darker shade as per the prescription. When all that is done, the bridge goes into the oven for the first bake. After her firing cycles are complete, she'll check her contacts again, and then she's gonna pass off her case to final QC. At final QC, we have one of our RDPs, in this case, Nicole, evaluating the, rest, the final restoration, checking that this case um, was followed, uh, the prescription was followed, the shades are correct, the contacts are correct. She disinfects it and passes it off to be invoiced and boxed up. So it's very soon to be happy patient. So here's a quick slide that I promised. If you get an iTero scanner, you're gonna need this information to be able to connect with us. 
It's super easy and Itero customer support is excellent. So just call Itero at this number and you can follow the slide accordingly. You can also um, use your phone right now and you can uh, screen capture this uh, QR code and then you can go to our website and it'll show you more instructions there. So I'm going to end my portion of the webinar with a super quick virtual tour of Shaw GTA and our technicians on an average day. Um, I walked around the lab and I just saw everyone in action. I love our, um, I love our new location. It's fantastic, um, really well organized and um, spacious. So please feel free to come and inquire about uh, doing a tour with us. We love giving tours. And then you can come and meet us and you can ask any question that you have for us. Thank you so much for listening to me. Um, I'm now going to pass on the presentation to Dr. Tao of Bayview Hill Dental, who's going to give us insight into his experience as a clinician working with an iTero scanner and Shaw Lab Group. I will see you again at the Q&A. Hello, and everybody. My name is Anthony Tao, and I'd like to start off by saying thank you to uh, Shaw Lab Group as well as iTero for inviting me here tonight so that I can share my experiences about digital dentistry. I'd also like to thank all attendees tonight, uh, this evening, for uh, putting up with me for the next 20 minutes. And Lee, can I get control of the mouse? Thank you. Okay, so, um, if you're thinking about going digital, uh, there's many reasons why I would encourage that. Uh, these are the topics I'd like to talk about tonight. Uh, opinion of the technology, the advantages of scanning over analog impressions, and I'd like to spend a little more time on the return of investment in uh, purchasing a digital scanner. Um, also, I'd like to show you how or explain how digital scanning has enabled me to be uh, pr providing better dentistry, and also the reasons why you should get a scanner. Uh, in this day and age, it can be used for many dental applications. So within the last decade or so, there have been many substantial technological advancements in dentistry. Digital impressions allow us to create a virtual computer generated replica of the hard and soft tissues of the mouth. Um, it um, increases productivity, uh, it's extremely efficient in capturing data, 
And uh, for that reason, it reduces my chair time, not only in scanning, but also in inserts of uh, crown and bridge work and other um, dental prostheses. Uh, and so it's very valuable in that way. Uh, when I talk about, uh, or I think about um, milestones in dentistry history, uh, I think about three things that come to mind. First thing is um, the invention of bonding and composite resins uh, that we have currently today. It's changed the way we practice dentistry for sure. The second thing is uh, implant dentistry. And I think that has uh, helped a lot of people avoid perhaps wearing dentures or having to produce a bridge cutting adjacent teeth, especially when they're uh, pristine teeth. So uh, that's the second thing. And the third thing is digital dentistry. Uh, I, I, I truly believe that it, um, it brings convenience and uh, confidence uh, to the work that I can provide. Uh, when I think about um, digital dentistry, it's very similar to online shopping. COVID has really changed things. And, um, and I, uh, in the past, I used to shop at the mall, but now I do all mine online, or most of it. And uh, it's much more convenient. Um, it's very similar to digital dentistry in that it's convenient, it's accurate, and it saves me a lot of time. Unlike uh, conventional shopping at the mall, you have to get in your car, you're worried about traffic or accidents. You get to the mall, you go to the shop, you look for the item and it's all sold out and you gotta go home. Well, in um, online shopping, all you have to do is get online, you uh, search for the product, it shows it's available and you hit buy. And so these are things that are making my life easier and uh, digital dentistry is, is certainly one of those things. Um, in terms of patient experience, there's a huge benefit in terms of comfort and the wow factor. Uh, patients are educated these days and they wanna know that their dentist is on the top of the game. They're impressed by technology and that's the way the future is going. Uh, another way that the future is going to, heading towards is going green. There's um, reusing, recycling, so why have extra plastic trays and uh, impression materials going to the landfills when we can easily just hit the delete button? Okay, so there are three different benefits that I see for digital scanning. The first one is benefits to the patient and benefits to the dentist or clinician. And thirdly, the benefits to a lab. So the first one uh, is very important to me. Uh, gagging uh, is, uh, is avoided with digital impressions. Uh, they could be the, the gooey material or even the bad taste that can gag a patient. Uh, it reduces patient anxiety. And um, when I think about anxiety in the dental uh, uh, office, um, several experiences that uh, produce anxiety could be the injection, uh, the gagging with impression materials, uh, painful experiences, and also the final bill. Although there are things that we don't want to change, such, such as the final bill, there are things that we can change to make life easier, and the digital scanner uh, certainly can help you with that. Uh, patients love new technology, and uh, patients can participate in the treatment process uh, as they are able to view their own teeth on the monitor. I often like to engage my patients and have them part of the treatment planning procedure because that makes them own up to it. What do I mean by that? Well, I'll give you an example. Uh, when I choose a color for a shade, I'm pretty much bang on, but I'll show the patient in the mirror, the shade tab, and I'll choose a second shade very close to the one I chose. And then I'll ask the patient, Mrs. Smith, which uh, shade do you like? And regardless of which one she chooses, I always end up by saying, Mrs. Smith, you know, I agree. I agree with your choice. I, I think that's the best shade as well. So we go with that. So uh, encouraging the patient to be part of the treatment is important. Benefits to the clinician. Uh, we um, tend to save a lot of time when we have accurate restorations. Uh, you spend less time uh, doing occlusal adjustments and polishing your adjustments. The wow factor is really important too. Um, we spend lots of time and money in marketing, uh, 
giving it, outsourcing it to uh, a, a website to help us attract new patients. But we have to understand that our best patients are the ones who are referred internally, the, what they are most committed to holding their appointments and not missing appointments. So the wow factor is great. Patients tell their fan, friends and family about what they've seen in their dental office, and they're more encouraged to um, refer their friends and family for that reason. There's definitely a lot less chair time involved when you're dig digitally scanning. I personally don't scan. I work with two assistants and they're all my assistants in this office are well-trained to scan. The average scan for them is about four and a half minutes. That's a complete upper arch, lower arch, as well as the bite. Um, and it's also quite helpful when you talk about college requirements and storing patient data uh, for 10 years. I, um, I used to store, the, store them in public storage. Uh, we ran out of space, so we had to get a second unit, but now we just store them and we don't have to pay for public storage anymore. We just uh, store it either in the cloud or on a hard drive and it's cheap. And never forget that the accuracy of analog impressions or digital impressions is um, much better. You don't have to worry about as much remakes or mistakes. Uh, the last thing that uh, the advantage is, uh, is that it uh, reduces lab stress. Um, it, I think labs have a difficult job when they receive an analog impression. A lot of the data shows that about 86% of analog impressions have some type of critical error. And the labs often have a difficult time deciding if they're going to call the dentist. Um, maybe they think that may, they may um, offend the dentist or perhaps the dentist uh, will get upset, um, but stress can be reduced if you take digital impressions because they're very accurate. Um, and talking about labs, it's also good to have good communication with your lab. Um, I personally went to Shaw Lab to see the facility. I was instantly blown away by the cleanliness, the orderly, and the type of uh, technology they have was incredible. Uh, but this is the way for me to get to know my laboratory. They get to know what I like, my preferences. And uh, it's really important. Our labs are our partners and they, uh, they're our livelihood. We together in partnership create great dentistry. But let's move on. In terms of return on investment, uh, the most noticeable thing is less chair time and downtime between patients. Uh, Pre-COVID, I used to enforce that uh, we don't have downtime between patients more than 10 minutes. Why? In a course of a seven hour day, a uh, 10 minute appointment per hour is about a whole hour's uh, production time. So almost $600 approximately uh, every day. So. Uh, Every, every minute counts, uh, and uh, ITERO really has helped us a lot there. Uh, we reduce our inventory and expensive impression materials. Uh, we reduce uh, shelving space requirements because of all that. Um, there's also a benefit of having efficient use of my staff. Um, they're not sitting around waiting for the next patient. They're scanning, they're all excited. They find a lot of pleasure in doing these sort of things. And um, uh, so not only do I enjoy it, all our staff enjoy that. Um, the cost of sleeves is really cheap. I think it works out to be about $6 per sleeve. And they come in this Ziploc bag and I write the patient's name on the bag. So after we use it, we uh, wash the, um, this, the, uh, the scanning sleeve. We pack it away, and uh, if that patient comes back for another procedure, I'm uh, able to take that out. So uh, it's quite cost effective in that way. So um, how has digital scanning enabled me to be, uh, provide better dentistry? Um, our patients call us dentists or doctor. And um, the word doctor is actually derived from the Latin verb docere, Sorry about my uh, pronunciation, but that basically uh, means uh, to teach. And with the ITERO, I'm able to 
show patients um, and, and facilitate their understanding through communication and, and visualizing things is really important. As they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. So I can magnify the image on the, the screen, just like I'm um, using my smartphone. I can use two fingers and drag them apart and magnify things. So that provides instant feedback for the way I'm doing things. Uh, it also can it also can um, help me provide better restorations. Um, when I magnify things, I can see certain errors such as sharp line angles in my veneer preps or maybe undercuts that I'd like to touch up with my with my uh, my drill and um, and with the analog impressions, if I made a little tiny mistake here and there, I sometimes am hesitant, hesitant to touch up the prep because that means I may need to take a new impression and may need to use retraction cord again. And uh, that means I'm down another five minutes and the next patient is at the front waiting for me. And that's how stress starts to um, escalate. But with the Itero, I magnify, I sort of lasso what I don't like, I delete that and I take another two or three seconds to scan that over again and I export that. So it really is helpful uh, in terms of having that uh, Itero present. Okay, so um, clinical applications of digital dentistry. In order for you to buy an Itero, you gotta have to be justified that you're gonna use it uh, unlike my universal gym equipment in the basement that collects dust. Uh, these are the different things that I use it for on, uh, in my clinic. And um, let's go through some of them. First one is Essex retainers. I use them a lot. I love them if I'm doing implant dentistry and I'm trying to prevent the opposing tooth from over extruding. I'll have a patient wear that to hold the opposing tooth in place. Um, I use the Itero for the next slide. Uh, treatment planning. Whether you place your own implants or you have a colleague or specialist to place it for you, sometimes they don't go exactly where you want. And uh, it's a good communication uh, for the laboratory to be able to show you digitally so that there's no surprises and it's um, sort of buffers any type of misunderstanding. So the laboratory can show me different angles like this. And uh, rather than make it a bridge lap, we try to um, compromise and, um, and I own up to it as well. I've seen it prior to being fabricated and, um, and I know what, what's to come and I can uh, tell the patient as well. So everyone is uh, in the loop and the communication process is continuous there. I use provisionals. When I do implants, and let's say this person snapped off a couple of teeth at the gum line, I like to extract the teeth and uh, use a, a, um, an Essex retainer rather than a flipper. Why? Because I don't want any pressure on the, uh, on the graft material. So this particular case was a very busy physician. He calls me up on the Sunday night and says, oh, I snapped my, uh, my uh, Essex retainer. Can I come in on Monday and uh, take a new impression? I've got a lot of meetings and uh, I need to have something in my mouth. And I know I didn't have any scheduled time. And I said to this, uh, this doctor, um, you don't have to come in because we digitally scanned your teeth. And uh, all I have to do is call Shao and Shaw uh, will uh, whip up another one lickety split. And so he was so thrilled that he didn't have to come in and uh, gave him a new Essex retainer right away. Uh, I do a lot of night guards. Uh, I use it to, for TMD, as well as to protect any type of crown and bridge that I've made. Uh, I find that uh, 3D printed uh, night guards with the digital scans are super accurate. They can actually program the thickness of relief around each and every tooth surface so that uh, it ensures comfort as it's being inserted. Uh, the bite is bang on usually, 
uh, unlike the analog impression where we have some type of impression material between teeth, this one captures it in occlusion. So um, yeah, there's just a huge difference in terms of the, uh, the chair time in inserting a night guard. I use it a lot for crown and bridge as well. And in this Itero scan, uh, we were making a crown for the tooth number one, three, and two, three, which is the upper right and left canine. Um, and uh, you can see that from this model here, um, these are where the lab checks the contacts and with conventional analog impressions, they kind of wear down if they're stone, whereas here, these uh, models are indestructible. And you can see that uh, you can also pop them out of the models and check the margins uh, so, um, and you can see these, uh, these, um, this is a Shaw ST crown it is beautiful. Nice work. Uh, it helps me with the digital wax ups and treatment planning. Sometimes I look at a patient, I don't know where to start. And that's when I rely on my partner, the, the dental lab, Shaw. And so we can, um, have veneers made in the two centrals and crowns elsewhere and, uh, get an idea. You can see from these bubbles, this was a case where I had to take an analog impression. Why? Because uh, our provider, um, our Otero machine, uh, was probably booked up by another clinician. In my op office, I have 13 chairs. And in my scheduling uh, scheduler, um, I have 13 columns. But we created a 14th provider. And uh, her name is Itero. And she's the most booked in our clinic. We actually made that because everyone's fighting for that Itero. So we have to book our chair time in the Itero column so that we don't uh, double book ourselves. And so currently she is so busy that uh, we're looking for another scanner. But going back to this case, uh, you can see the before and after. And um, we can, from this digital mock-up, create a... Uh, 3D printed model, and then make an Essex retainer over it. And that Essex retainer serves not only as a reduction guide, but also for temporization. So it's very helpful. And the next stage, I um, I scan most of my implants. Um, this illustrates what a um, scan body looks like, and uh, that's the final crown. And by the way, I always send a picture of the x-ray to a Shaw that shows them where the level of the implant is and how much soft tissue is there so that they can gauge how much pressure to put on the, uh, the gingiva so that uh, the insert appointment isn't so uh, uncomfortable. You can see from this that uh, in a recall checkup, she had uh, a lot of tartar and there was, uh, I didn't see her for about two or three years, two years because of COVID, but uh, a nice restoration doesn't pick up much or any tartar at all. I use uh, the scanner as well for multiple implants. Uh, I'm comfortable using it up to four implants, but as you get into more implants, sometimes it has favorable outcomes if you use an analog impression. Uh, but uh, this shows you the um, scan that we took with the Itero. And you can see that there are different sizes of scan bodies depending on where you want it to put them. So always tell your laboratory which scan body model you're using. And next slide, I have an occlusal view of the scan. I like to place it so that the flat side is facing buccal. And if you turn that by mistake and you, and you scan it to 90 degrees in rotation, then you may uh, have a difficult time scanning between the teeth. But um, this was a very easy scan. It took uh, upper, lower, five minutes at most. And the next slide, and this is the uh, digital model, the 3D printed model. And this is the final outcome uh, about eight years later. You can see that she's a bit of a smoker. And I know where she puts her cigarette right there, but uh, overall, a very beautiful case. And this had zero adjustments just went right in perfectly. And so for very complicated cases, I love to use the Itero. Uh, this case, the person had implants uh, all in the first quadrant 
and he he broke his bridge, cracked roots. So we decided to give him a denture, which he couldn't tolerate. So thereafter, we decided to go uh, for more implants. And so I um, digitally scanned his mouth and we got this STL file. And then we got a CBCT on him, which is a DICOM file. And once merged, the implants can be placed virtually. And as a result, this um, surgical guide can be fabricated. And so we create, uh, Shaw created this um, image for me, a digital image. And there were limitations. It was a little bulbous here. And I showed the patient and the patient said, okay, can you take it down a little bit? And he, the patient knew that we couldn't take it down much because you'll see in the following slides why. So we did take it down a bit and he owned up to it. He said, I like it. I know now that his upper jaw was quite uh, uh, behind or class three retrognathic than the lower arch. And so these teeth had to span out. I explained to him, we could have made these teeth straighter by making him an anterior crossbite, but he didn't want that. So for him to see this image, uh, he learned that uh, there's, this is the best we can do for him. Um, and next one, so uh, this is the final outcome and he was really thrilled about it. And so I said to him, it's time to also protect your investment and let's make a night guard. So on the right screen, this is our Itero scan. And that's an occlusion and next scan, all done. So from that, uh, yep, the next, this right. So you can see that with the Itero scan and um, planning out properly, we can make all these implants screw retained um, and uh, so in case we ever had a problem, we can always remove it easily. So I think that concludes everything. Uh, thank you very much for allowing me to uh, share my experiences. Thank you, Dr. Tao, for the excellent presentation. Uh, we've gone a little bit over time, so we wanted to uh, wrap things up so that we have time for Q&A. I just briefly wanted to show this slide to show you that we have a full suite of iTero intraoral solutions to really meet you where you are in terms of your digital journey. Um, so we'll be reaching out to you in the next couple of days. We can arrange for an in-office demo um, if that's something that you would like, so you can uh, expect to hear from us. And now I believe we're going to take some questions. We'll just pause there before we get started. We'll see if there's any questions, but certainly want to thank everyone for joining us and especially thank our speakers. It's amazing to hear all of the innovation that's happening at Shaw and the support that we know that we um, can tell our iTero users to sort of seek out help and, and come in and for a visit. So that's amazing. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Tao, for sharing your experience. Um, and Lisa, of course, we really appreciate the insight on iTero. So um, if you do have questions, please put them into the Q&A and we can spend a few minutes now um, answering some of those. But again, we will send out the recording and a follow-up email. So I'll just um, go through some of the questions here. Um, and Lisa, this might be best answered by you, but for missing anatomy, is it better to fill rather than over scan? Um, I think I might turn that one over to Renee if she's on the lab side. Um, or I can take it. Yeah. Um, it. It really depends. So you could certainly try capturing that with the, with the fill tool. Um, depending on the model that you're using, you're, you're capturing uh, different frames per second, as I spoke of earlier. So some of our more recent uh, models are capturing 6,000 points per second, but you can certainly try uh, the fill tool. Another kind of tip for that is coming cheek side and just rocking in that area will also help the camera capture that space. Okay. Okay, it looks like a couple other questions. Um, 
I see a, a number of questions regarding price. Because we do have a couple different scanners, we're gonna reach out to everybody um, immediately after this presentation and um, put you in touch with your direct ITRO rep so that they can give you the best pricing dependent on the model that you're, you're looking for. But um, we'd be happy to answer that and even bring the scanner to the offices. I will add to that, Lee, that we do have special pricing for everyone that has attended this webinar. Um, given the amazing turnout, we've, we've added some special promotions uh, that we have to offer. So as I said, we will be reaching out to you and we'd be happy to do a live demonstration at the practice with you. And Renee, I see you also joined us. Um, did you have any further comments as it related to the fill tool? Yeah, absolutely. So great, great question. I know that gets asked a lot. Uh, we're incredibly proud of our high definition scans, um, but occasionally it can be a little bit overkill. So imagine if you're doing a full mouth scan, we're kind of moving through the entire mouth, but when we're focusing on an individual prep, if we're sitting on that tooth for quite a long time, there's a couple of things that can happen. Not only can we add too much information where it ends up building layer after layer, and it can be a little bit excessive, but imagine when we're used to using PBS, we're used to pressure being on that tissue and, and pushing things out of the way. Where you have a camera sitting over the, the prep, now we have a nice dry surface, we're scanning. But if we sit on that prep for let's say 15 seconds, what if at second eight or nine moisture starts to creep back in? Now I have some layers of moisture over those original clean scans and we have to merge them because of that, that link. And then we end up getting something that looks a little bit fuzzy to the lab. So there's a few reasons why we want you to use that fill tool and scan on the prep a little bit quicker. One is so we don't cause too much additional data. And then the second is so we can make sure that that field stays really dry and we get out of there before that moisture starts to go in. I see another question here. Um, all of the scanners are on rolling carts or is there a more portable option? So I, I'm just gonna share the screen again for the doctor that's asking that question. I'm sure others are curious as well, but there is a, is a new model that recently came out that's probably the most portable. So I'm just gonna put that up and, and open it up if anyone would like to speak to the new mobile version. I can take that. Um, yes, we do often get asked for a mobile version. Previously, we had a laptop version, but what we found with that is that you provide the hardware and we provide the software and the wand. So now what we have is a fully enclosed class one medical device. So it is exactly as you see with the cart version, just condensed uh, with the 15 and a half inch high definition screen. It is portable. It kind of looks like a briefcase. Uh, and it has a kickstand. So it's, it's an amazing solution. It comes with its own um, customized uh, carry case as well. So that's something new actually that we just released this year. Uh, maybe for Renee, the subchangeable question. Can you read it out? Yeah. Uh, we have a question here. How deep subgingival can you scan crown margin before you decide you need a manual impression? Renee, do you want to take that one as well? Sure. So that's a great question. We get that question a lot. And it kind of goes back to what I said a minute ago, where we're kind of relying on what we visually see now, right? So in a situation where we had material that kind of seep meet that tissue and maybe capture some of those subgingival margins, with a scanner, we don't have that luxury, unfortunately. So if we can't visually see that margin, we're not going to be able to scan it properly. Now, I will tell you, you can get through some of that with proper retraction. If you guys can use two retraction cords, as was mentioned earlier, pull that top cord. It can help move that tissue out of the way and still retract it. As far as the depth of field for the actual camera, because that can be a different question as well, we typically can go about 13 millimeters away and still capture a clear picture. But two different things are going on. If that, that margin is beneath the tissue subgingivally and that tissue can't be retracted and we can visually see down into that pocket to capture it, we're not going to be able to capture it with the scanner. Um, and then there is a question that they sometimes have trouble um, scanning edentulous areas in a partial. Um, 
Can we speak to that if there's any tips and tricks that we can share now? Absolutely. So hi, everybody. I'm Renee. I know I, I didn't. Uh, we had these amazing speakers tonight. So you're wondering who this crazy person is at the end talking to you. I'm the senior trainer for labs and Align Technologies for North America. And I've been with Align for about 10 years. So exciting career here. I was a surgical tech in Perio for 13 years prior to that. So excited to share um, some of these things with you tonight. Edentulous, great question. That is a hot topic right now, right? Everyone wants to be able to scan for dentures. We wanna be able to scan those edentulous areas. Dr. Tao was showing some incredible cases with those scan bodies. And you would see between the scan bodies was a dentulous ridge, right? So you can tell he's a pro at scanning that they're able to capture that. So what I would tell you when you're working with that is patience is a virtue along with everything in life, right? The scanner works by mapping information. So when we're trying to scan a long edentulous ridge, it's having a hard time picking it up occasionally because it's very smooth and there isn't a lot of three-dimensional images for that scanner to capture and start to build. So what we wanna do when we're doing a dentulous, let's say it's a span and we have a tooth in the posterior and maybe four teeth that are missing and then a tooth in the anterior. I want you to think about that depth of field. We would start on the occlusion of that posterior tooth and our instinct is to move forward across that ridge, but now our data has disappeared, right, into that ridge. So what we want to do instead is stay on that posterior tooth, roll out to the buckle, and follow that tissue till we get to the next tooth, come up the buckle, and back onto the occlusion. That's going to keep the camera close to the information so it can build that bridge to the next tooth. Now, if you don't have any posterior teeth and we're trying to build a ridge backwards, what we wanna do instead is start in the most posterior tooth, even if that's 21 or 22. I'm sorry, I know the, num the numbering system is different in Canada, I apologize. And we're gonna start on the occlusal surface, you'll move out to the buckle and you'll follow that tissue straight back. Now, another trick on the scanner too, not to get too detailed, this is definitely something someone can help you with as you, when you're in the moment, but where that incredible fill tool is, you probably saw there were a lot of other things listed there on that menu. One of them is AI disable. What that is, is we have a great feature on the scanner that helps you get rid of tissue and lip. But when you're trying to scan soft tissue in an edentulous area, it can sometimes mistake that as something you don't want. And it'll start to kind of take it away for you. So when you're scanning those edentulous ridges as well, you can hold your finger down on the screen and disable that. And that'll really help you guys help stitch that information. But I will tell you, patients, go very slowly and make sure you're staying as close to that information as possible. Excellent question, so. Um, I think I'm gonna answer a question. Um, I have a question here of the benefit of iTero over some other scanners. So my biggest um, pro to getting an iTero is the customer support. So it's really, really big for us. Um, Shaw is the same way. Our customer service is number one. We want like really great communication. We want people to be reliable. We want people to follow up and be responsible for things. So what iTero is, is that they are producing these scanners and they are responsible for them. It's not just being resold and kind of give that customer support giving to the reseller. So it's really like when you have a problem with your iTero scanner, you're calling iTero and they're going to redirect you to the right person. Um, We've had experiences like that ourselves with um, manufacturing equipment. So if it was a reseller, they're like, oh, well, just go talk to the manufacturer or the manufacturer would be like, talk to your reseller. And then you're just in a circle and it's just a mess. Like you want answers right away. You want people to feel responsible for their product. And that's something that iTero really is uh, good with. They're great with the labs and they're great with the dentist. So, you know, every time I've had an issue, like we call them and we get a good answer. They walk us through it. I really, really recommend iTero scanners for people that are kind of technology wary, like I find that you will have somebody on the phone with you going, uh, going onto your computer and like making sure that everything's okay. That's the kind of support that I give myself as a supervisor. Like if I can't see it and you can't explain it, like I'm gonna go on your computer, I'm gonna help you out. But I also have like a great team now with like Lee and Lisa and Renee that you know, I can reach out to them and they can answer questions for me because I don't know everything. I'm not, at, I'm like, I don't work in the clinics, right? So I don't see everything. I don't see everything you're dealing with. So we have like a really great collaborative environment now with iTero and, you know, within our labs. So that is the huge benefit to iTero that you don't see with the other scanners. I, I just, I really love it. So that's why I wasn't hesitant to be in the seminar. Just fantastic um, customer support. 
Yes, I was just going to address the question about CE. There isn't CE for this webinar tonight, um, but you know we do have some CE available on our Learn iTero Element site. If that's something that you would like to learn more about iTero, so I, I'll make sure to send that out to all of the attendees um, for you. Maybe there's one last one. Why is it critical to scan abutment only for five to ten seconds to avoid overscanning? Is the question. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you guys mean abutment like the abutment tooth of a bridge or do you mean a scan body? Whatever it is, if it's an individual prep, the reason we want you to do five to 10 seconds is it's about 6,000 images per second. So if you can imagine that building in one specific area, it can really be too much data. It starts to build, 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 almost like a little, little a printer. If you guys have ever seen a printer build layer upon layer. The second reason is we don't want the tissue to change. So we don't want that moisture to start to creep in. Now we've got a layer of scans, maybe eight to 12 seconds in, that didn't look the same as it did when we first put the camera in place. I'll tell you another trick too. I would welcome Dr. Tao to chime in on this. I'm sure he has his own opinion on this. I am a little bit skeptical about the Airwater syringe. In the last 20 years of dentistry, I've gotten to see a lot of preps being scanned and impressions taken. And it's incredible for taking a traditional impression because it blows everything out of the way and then we can refill that area of the impression material. But if we're using the scanner, I've noticed that if we're using the air water syringe, everything blows out of the way. But then while we're positioning, things can start to roll back in. What I've seen that's incredibly successful is actually holding gauze and pinching, holding really, really tight. And then when you're ready to take that scan, removing that gauze or cotton roll, it keeps the field much drier for a little bit longer. And that way you get a better chance of capturing that information without it rolling in. And Dr. Tao, if you have a different technique or opinion, please share it with us. Well, I do very similarly this, uh, what you just mentioned. I, I also don't really like to use the air water syringe because it pushes the saliva elsewhere. So if, you're, if you are trying to capture a couple of areas, and you use a saliva ejector, you may be creating a pool of saliva elsewhere where you're gonna be scanning next. So I usually use a cotton roll and I uh, absorb the moisture that way. Good answer, Dr. Tao. <laughs> Just one last question. How many units of bridge can be comfortably scanned without discrepancy in your experience or? Again, I'd probably defer on Dr. Tao for what's been successful for him, but I would tell you if we're getting like handbook technical, I would say in the past, we would say no longer than a 20 millimeter scan where we can really scan easily and fluidly. That's not that it's not true that you can't scan further than that. That's where we start to get a little bit more complicated, right? It can be some advanced scanning. You have to really be patient. You have to go a little bit slower. You have to make sure that that scanner is staying with you and picking up that soft tissue. But I would say we could even do an completely entirely, entirely edentulous ridge, as long as you're very patient and moving slowly through that process. Well, it looks like that's the, the last question. So I think we'll let everyone else get back to their evening. Thank you again to Shaw, a fantastic partner, and um, Dr. Tao, thank you for sharing your experience and your, and your um, presentation tonight. Um, we look forward to reaching out to everyone that participated. Renee, thanks again for joining at the, the end here for some questions, and uh, have a great night, everyone. Thank you so much.